Ms. Baum asks us, is there a difference between the quantitative problem solving skills of physical science majors and business majors? So is there a difference between the problem solving skills for those two groups? GRE quantitative test scores for both groups are summarized below. Find a 95% confidence interval for the true mean difference between the scores of physical science majors and business majors. Is there a different, a significant difference? If so, who does better? Okay, so what we want to do is look at the difference between these two majors, and to do that, we have the data here provided to us in the problem. So it says physical science majors had a sample size of 38. This sample mean, this standard deviation, business majors 42. Uh, this sample mean, this standard deviation. Okay, so the key thing in the problem that we notice here is that they want us to form a 95% confidence interval, right? 95% confidence interval for the true mean difference between the scores of physical science majors and business majors. So we know it's a confidence interval and we're looking for the difference between the true mean um, of the two populations. Okay, and then finally they ask us if there is a significant difference and if there is one, who actually does better? Okay, so, well, we see that, of course, physical science majors have a higher score, so if there is a difference and we should show there's a significant difference, then it must mean that the physical science majors do better than the business majors. That would be the question, though. Is that a significant difference or just um, a random fluctuation that can happen by chance when you grab any two sample sizes, right? All right, well, if it's a confidence interval, the first step we're going to do is record the data or the information in a meaningful way. Luckily, it's already been summarized for us here, so we don't have to do much other than really just copy that stuff down, the important part, right? So let's do that now. Let's copy down what we need. So we're going to have physical science majors, right, and business majors. Okay, so PSM and BM, right? Physical science majors, their sample size was 38. Uh, the sample mean here was 692, the standard deviation was 149 for business majors, N was 42, X bar 594, and S is equal to 151. The next step then is to look at the confidence level, figure out what it is in the problem. Now if you look back at the problem itself, it tells us the confidence level was 95%. So we're going to use 95% here. That means alpha, of course, is 5%. In confidence intervals, that's divided into two tails. So we're going to use, for a critical value, Z alpha divided by 2, which is our second step of the problem. Now remember, Z alpha divided by 2 is the second step, and it's Z alpha because we have large sample size. Both sample sizes are over 30. Make sure you take a second to look at those, and then use Z because they're large sample sizes, right? So we're going to go look up on our table 5% in two tails. So in other words, we're going to look at alpha chopped in half, so 0 0.025 on the T table, go straight to the bottom where the large Z values are, are included, and we'll find the answer there. So let's go ahead and do that, and we'll come back and finish the problem. Okay, so we're looking at the 0 0.025 column that's here, and we're going to go down to where we find the last value in the table because we're looking for a z value, and we're going to use that value for our critical z score. Okay, so all the way down, and we find the answer 1.960. 1.960. Okay, so our z alpha divided by 2 value turned out to be 1.960. Now from there, the next step is to calculate the margin of error. So remember the formula is z alpha divided by 2 times the square root of sigma for the first population squared divided by the sample size for that group, and sigma for the second population squared divided by the sample size for that group. Now we don't have these population standard deviation values, so we'll use s as a substitute. So we're going to let z alpha be 1.96 times the square root of the S is 149 for the physical science majors. We'll square that, divide by 38, plus the standard deviation for the second group, 151 squared, divided by the sample size, which is 42. Okay, so let's work that out in our calculators and see what we get. So I'm going to take 1.96. And I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the square root of 149 squared divided by 38 plus 151 squared divided by 42. And of course, you'll notice that I'm not using any special parentheses, just the parentheses that come with my square root there. And I end up with the total or this, the answer is 65.802 dot dot dot, right? That goes on and on, so we'll just leave it there. I'm actually going to store that in my calculator as a variable so I can come back and 
recall it later when I need it. Now the next step of the problem is to go ahead and subtract the means, right? And then use that difference and then subtract off the error and then add the error to it, right? So we use that same distance, difference, sorry, and we subtract and add the error to it. Okay, so the question is, what is the difference between the sample means? What is the difference between the sample means? Well, we can do that just by doing 692, the sample mean for the physical science majors, minus 594, and oops, I actually typed two subtraction symbols there. So when I do the subtraction, I get 98. So 98 is the true difference, minus the error, and 98 plus the error. All right, now if I plug in my error to this, if I do 98 minus the error we just calculated, it ends up giving me 32.2, let's say. And if I do the same thing plus the error, I get the answer 163.8. All right, so remember, what's the wording that we use here? We would say that we are 95% confident, right, that the true mean difference, that's mean one minus mean two, is between 32.2 and 163.8. All right, now let's address, so we have the interval and we know that the true mean difference is somewhere between these two values. So let's actually talk about something. Let's say what if the true mean difference between physical and science majors average score and business majors average score, what if it was the smallest number in the interval, let's say 32 points? What would that mean exactly? Well, since we did the subtraction mean one minus mean two, it would mean that when you take the physical science major score and subtract the business major score, that difference could be as small as 32. But notice it's still positive, which still implies that the physical science majors did better than the business majors. Because when you subtract them, you end up with a positive number, which means this number must have been bigger than that number in a significant fashion, right? Of course, if you subtracted them and got a number as high as 163, there'd be even a bigger difference between the two groups, but still in favor of the physical science majors because both of these numbers are positive. So remember the rule is if both interval limits are positive, it means the first group that you used in your subtraction, 1 minus 2, the group that took the first position there is going to be significantly larger than the second group, right? So in this case, since both interval limits are positive, it implies the physical science majors did better than the business majors in a significant fashion. And that means when we answer this next question here, which is, is there a significant difference? Our answer is yes, there is. And if so, who does better? Well, the answer to that is that the physical science majors do better than the business majors because they had the higher score and it was significantly higher because both of these limits are positive. They do not include zero between them, so there's no chance that they scored, or at least according to the interval, there's no reason to believe that they scored the same statistically. That means that the physical science majors did in fact do better because zero is not a possible candidate, right? And that's it.